Nessa girl, if you don't come get these old hoes off the internet riding here beefing about some old stale stuff, this damn auntie fight, don't nobody want to see this mess. Candy Burris and Tamar Braxton are feuding, y'all. Want to talk about it? Here you go. Nessa girl, Tamar Braxton got on the uh, Watch What Happens Live and fucked up the thing, baby. She got on there and got it started, and now it is World War Three with Hunt and Candy. What am I talking about, child? I don't know if you remember months ago, Tamar did a concert, escaped a whole bunch of people in Atlanta, and Tamar took to social media and said, an Atlanta housewife and her city official husband just threatened me, tried to fight me, whatever the case may be. And she didn't tell us who it was in that moment. And I remember in that moment being like, oh, this is so freaking childish. And this is so Tamar-like for her to stir up the whole internet with this foolishness, but not going to tell us who it was. It was just juvenile. It reeked of being juvenile or whatever the case may be. A couple days went by, situation died down. The world did not fall off of its axis. It kept spinning. Fast forward to this episode of Watch What Happens Live, a fan asked Tamar, who was that you were referring to? Then Andy goes, was it Eva? And Tamar swiftly says, no, 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 it wasn't Eva. He goes on the list. Then he says, was it Candy? And Tamar takes a big swig of her drink, okay? Not saying anything, but saying everything. Then following that, at least this is the way I caught it, Tamar gave a more lengthy written explanation that it was Candy and Todd who threatened her at the situation. Candy makes a response video, something to the effect of her husband didn't even get close to Tamar, now Tamar want to play victim, so on and so forth. And then Tamar makes a response video detailing the whole situation, saying that basically, you know, Candy did not like Tamar's response and the way she was reporting on the Carlos King stealing, escapes life story situation and trying to sell it to TV One. Tamar explains that, you know, she, before she calls somebody a liar, she wants to hear both parts of the story, citing that she was not just a reality girl. She was a bona fide journalist, five-time Emmy nominated. And I'm like, girl, okay, uh, journalists, no, you don't get to call yourself a journalist, Tamar. Journalists are people who actually went to school and got a degree in journalism and worked in the field of journalism. You are a TV host, not a journalist. That's number one. So, uh, you know, the foundation of your argument was a little crack there because you tried to make yourself seem like you were a notch above the girls. And now you right there with the girls. Tamron Hall, a journalist. Lonnie Love, Tamara Maori, Adrian Bailon, Jenny Ma, Tamar Braxton, TV host. Ain't nothing wrong with being a TV host, especially considering the fact that you probably get paid better than journalists. But you're not a journalist, sis. you still five-time Emmy nominated, but you're not a journalist, sis. You was on a successful show, but you're not a journalist, sis. Girl, you could sing your ass down, but you're not a journalist, sis. Anyway, she says at the concert in the hallway, so she sees Candy. She goes to hug Candy. Candy goes, I'm not fucking with you, and proceeds to get a little rah-rah-rah with Tamar. People start coming around, and Tamar's own words, Todd comes to grab Candy and looks her up and down and says, you know what it is, all right? And so I'm listening to Tamar's story, and I'm waiting on the part where Todd threatened her. Like, I'm waiting for her to say, Todd came back out and got up in her face. Now, here's the thing. I was not there. I didn't see any video footage. So I don't know what he did, all right? But based on the way Tamar described the situation and based on Todd's character, his history, and his track record with confrontation, um, I find it difficult to believe that Tamar found herself in a situation where she felt unsafe, 
where she thought that her personal safety was in jeopardy or where she felt like Todd was going to hurt her, harm her, or do anything to jeopardize her personal safety. It's just very hard for me to believe based on the story that Tamar told out of her own mouth that she was frightened for her well-being with Todd grabbing candy and saying, you know what it is. Tamar then goes on to go on this diatribe about, you know, drawing a line where a man steps to a woman and gets up in a woman's face. And I totally agree with that. You know what I'm saying? A man should not be up in a woman's face. A man should not be threatening a woman. A man should not be making a woman feel unsafe. However, the situation you described coupled with Todd's track record doesn't give threatening. It's really giving reaching i want attention i'm putting 10 i'm putting 20 on 10 i'm adding a little extra flavor to the situation because i got embarrassed and um now i gotta rectify the situation and you know candy throughout the term now you want to play victim um let's not pretend like tamar does not have a past history of playing victim in situations however i will say this if Candy did step to her and get all unruly in her face at a concert when Tamar was trying to be nice, then you know what? Tamar's got the right to respond any way she wants to respond. Um, I find it odd that Candy would have chosen that environment to tackle that issue. You know what I'm saying? Like, as a fellow singer and performer, it would seem to me that she would want to be somewhere in a Wusa Zen state of mind getting ready for her upcoming performance and would grant Tamar the same courtesy. Um, so, you know, that was a little off and, and I, I don't necessarily think it was right to confront somebody slash pick a fight with somebody before both of y'all get ready to go on stage. Um, I also think it's a little weird that somebody who you were cool with and you got their phone number um, that you just didn't call them when it happened and confront them, yet you wait until it's time for y'all concert and you run into the person in the hallway to get all, you know, rah, rah, rah with the individual. So I don't know. You know, it, it feels like there's a lot of enough fault and blame to go around. Um, I, I imagine Candy is feeling like Tamar wasn't being friendly when she made the comments relating to Carlos King still in their life story. And then she doubled down on it by posting it to her story. Um, some people on the internet describe it as Tamar Braxton interjecting herself and something that she had nothing to do with. I'm pretty sure Tamar's response is going to be, I was asked a question and I just answered it, which I want to touch on for a second. You know, Tamar has a track record of doing that, of starting fires or being messy, or answering messy questions that she knows is going to set the internet on fire, and then she wants to dip back and do the whole, what? I asked the question, and I answered the question. Yeah, but you didn't have to answer the question. Nobody was going to die if you evaded the question. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's kind of like you went this long without it. Like, why now? You know what I'm saying? Why now? Now, granted, you can't tell somebody how to express themselves and when to get mad. It's just, I, you know, I, I for the life of me, I don't understand people who invite drama into their life. Um, when Tamar originally tweeted it, out the night of the concert that was an invitation for drama and the way she responded to it on watch what happens live was an invitation for drama now did it happen to her and does she have the right to address it anytime she wants anywhere she sees fit absolutely absolutely she absolutely does but you also have to take the negative consequences that come along with it and it was just an invitation for unnecessary drama that did not have to be and then now the, the, the men are involved. You know what I'm saying? Like Jr. came out and said he did talk to Todd and that Todd was embarrassed for how he acted and he apologized and he was apologizing. 
which is which was the right thing to do. I mean, to just squash the shit. All of y'all have to coexist. Y'all run in similar social circles, so on and so forth. So it just made sense for Todd to apologize and 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 for. Uh, it to just be water under the bridge because the shit was just not that real from the beginning, which leads me to believe that there is a larger issue going on, and which is probably why Tamar's response in the first place to the whole Carlos King thing didn't lend itself to Candy's favor. But all of this is childish and petty. And unfortunately, because Tamar has a history of being involved in shit like this, I think it reflects on her more poorly than it does uh, Candy. And then now, you know, it's gotten real petty with calling Candy a billy goat and posting videos of her singing and saying she really can't sing. And listen, you know, as a bystander, the shit is funny. I'm not going to lie to you. Did I chuckle when I seen it? Absolutely, I did. But then after I chuckled and I scrolled, I just shook my head and said, it's a damn shame because this grown ass people name calling and acting like this on the Internet when, you know, y'all got businesses and bigger ventures. It's just not this real to me. For this to be what's in the news cycle at the top of the week and they about to arrest Donald Trump today, supposedly. Like, I don't know. It, it really, I really ain't got much to say on the situation. Y'all wanted my two cents. There it is. Um, and hopefully these aunties get it together. I got to go to the gym and then I'll come back and talk to y'all about SWV because I haven't watched the episode yet. Um, I just had to find an hour to devote to watching reality TV. But I'll call y'all back. Bye.